We're here with Mark Schneider. He is the founder of Gen4 Nuclear. He's a nuclear expert and advocate for nuclear power. He spent 20 years working on nuclear things in the military. Uh, Mark, thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. So tell us in a nutshell, why should we use nuclear power? Isn't it dangerous and scary? Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of misinformation about that, but uh, the number one thing I talk about with nuclear energy is right now in the United States, we have 10,000 years of energy available that we're just not using, right? It's literally, you know, we call it nuclear waste, but it's not actually waste. We only consume about, you know, 2 to 3% of the fuel that's actually in there because we use a very inefficient design. So the big thing I know that people talk about is they're concerned about the waste and they're concerned about meltdowns and, and weapons proliferation. But the way that the reactor operated, that stuff can't be used for weapons. It's not useful, right? So that, that's the first thing we have to throw out. Whatever the waste is, is not good for weapons. It's not, that's not a thing. You have special reactors for that. All right, the second thing we talk about is meltdowns. Well, these new generation reactors are actually safe from meltdown, and more importantly, um, they can actually consume or eat nuclear waste as their fuel. So I could take a, you know, I'm a use a, a quick analogy here to explain it. So I go to a nuclear power plant right now, um, and it has about four and a half to six years of fuel. If I could wave a wand and magically create the same size reactor that operated off of uh, as a fast breeder plutonium reactor, it would last four to five hundred years that same fuel load out in there. Wow. Right? That's how inefficient we use our current energy system. Um, but the other thing is about the waste, right? So the waste we have right now is going to last hundreds of thousands of years, and that's not good. We don't want that. But the reason why it lasts hundreds of thousands of years is because that's actually the fuel mm -hmm. that's causing that. So if I put this in into a, a generation four reactor and I burn it, and I'm going to use the, the quick the quick math. It's it's relative. It's uh, not it's rough, but so I take a hundred tons of this stuff, right? I operate it, you know, in a reactor for 20, 30, 40 years, right? And when I pull that waste out after it's been completely consumed, after the fuel's been completely consumed, 60% of it, 60 tons of it, I can just throw away. It's not radioactive, it's not gonna hurt anyone, it's gonna go through the standard industrial process uh, for uh, disposal, All right? The next is I got, so I got 40 tons left. Well, 25 tons of that has uses in industry or in the medical, uh, or for medical purposes, right? Uh, so one of the things that you can do with this is there's something called radiography. You come building like this, you got a, a fire protection system. Well, there's welds on those pipes and you have to check those welds to make sure they're, they're good. It's an x-ray is what radiography is, like a super powerful x-ray to make sure that that pipe's not gonna burst and rupture in the event of a fire. So it's you know very important that we have that kind of uh, stuff for industry and then things like cancer treatments from um, you know, for radiation therapy and all that that we can do. So there's all sorts of purposes with the waste itself from the Gen 4 reactors. Now I have 15 tons left, right? I take 15 tons of this power, of this, of this waste. It's going to last at most 300 years. But that's only maybe one or two tons of it. The rest of it may last, you know, 10, 20, 30 years or so. And over time, it's going to decay. So I don't have to have, need a large scale repository like Yucca Mountain because it's only going to last for a short period, of, or a relatively short period of time. But then there's something else that's beneficial about this, this quote unquote waste that's going to last for 300 years. Well, it's perfect for nuclear batteries. And this is something I'm just learning about because I've never been an expert in that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm getting my research on there. But we're spending, we have deep space probes that are powered off of batteries that use that kind of waste because it has the right length of time to where it produces the right amount of energy and they can, you know, use that as our power. So literally I have, you know, uh, I come out, I put 100 tons in, and I come out with basically nothing. Okay. Well, that's all well and good, but what about, like, Fukushima? Is, is the radiation going to kill us all if there's some kind of accident at the power plant? I mean, Greenpeace says nuclear energy should be very scary to all of us, and uh, you, you must just hate the earth, right? So, so what's the deal? Are, are we going to be in danger from this? Um, so one thing is, is that uh, Fukushima is an old generation design, right? And it's it's a, uh, all the reactors that we built in the in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I don't want to build any any of those. We've uh, there are new safety systems we've put in place. Uh, uh, there's a program called BDB Flex, and it's for Beyond Design Basis Flex, and they have diesel driven equipment. This is because of Fukushima that's on every site that can be hooked up to the reactor, and then you have national repositories that within 24 hours they can airlift in this equipment, right? So and then. 
there's the new generation, there's the third generation reactors they're building. There's 54 of them under construction right now, planet wide, and they actually have a, a three to seven day grace period before you can even have a meltdown, before you can get your systems back. If Fukushima was one of those, you would have never had that. They could have gotten their systems back. But, and if they had that portable equipment, they could have gotten those systems back. Um, so those are methods to get rid of it. Now with generation four, they're actually designed to be safe from meltdown. And some of these have actually been proven. So there was a reactor back in the 60s is called Experimental Breeder Reactor 2. And they actually had it at, they, it, it was a worse than Fukushima event they tested. So it was at full power, right? When the, the tsunami and earthquake happened, Fukushima had shut down, and then the tidal wave came in and they lost their cooling system. So they had a period of time from shutdown, so they have this decay heat that exists. At Experimental Breeder Reactor 2, or EBR2 as they call it, they were at a full power and they shut off all the cooling systems and 300 seconds later, the reactor was completely shut down and it stayed there until they started it back up. No extra cooling needed, nothing. So we know we can do this. And there was another reactor they actually proved this with uh, called uh, the Molten Salt Reactor Experiment. So we know that we can do this stuff. And there's companies out there that want to switch to these designs from the old water-cooled designs. So it's, a lot of it comes down to what your material selections are. But well, why, why aren't we doing these things then? Is, there some, is it a policy reason? Is it the industry? What's the obstacle to getting this done? So there's uh, there's a couple of obstacles. One is there's there's not the regulations in place for all the different types of uh, of reactors as far as inspections and stuff like that. Uh, two, the NRC has not licensed a commercial. Um, tell tell the listeners what the NRC is because people don't know that. The NRC is the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So they're the ones that license all the reactors for uh, the the for the U.S. Okay. Um, and then there's you know different organizations for different countries as well. So they don't have uh, the expert expertise and they're having to kind of learn how to license these. So that's you know the second thing. The third thing is uh, thanks to the Jimmy Carter administration, we cannot reprocess fuel. So we have to repeal that regulation before we could even start doing this. Wow. Very cool. And where do people learn more about this? Have you got a website, Mark? Yeah, I do, yeah. It's uh, gen4nuclear.com, G-E-N-I-V is in the Roman numeral 4, nuclear.com. All right. Hey, thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.